Hey everyone, welcome to today's feature focus video and today we're going to try something new. I'm going to attach a little bit of a tutorial, I'm trying to keep it short, on how to use the actual feature that we've been focusing on in our social media posts. So today what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about bones and specifically how to use bones with forward kinematics. Now, uh, there's two types of kinematics. There's forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. So today we're going to talk about forward kinematics and with forward kinematics it allows us to create simple skeletons and with that we have to pose each bone and the rotation of each bone gives us the final position that we're looking for so uh, with forward kinematics we have to pose each bone and uh, get the, the the poses that we're going for now with inverse kinematics this takes a little bit more to set up we have to use a constraint but when we set that up, we can actually control the entire bone chain by just moving around a target. And that target dictates the rotation of each bone. And um, yeah, so we can get our poses by just rotating or just moving the one target. Now, we're not gonna talk about this today. Uh, in another video, we'll cover inverse kinematics, but here we're gonna just talk about bones and forward kinematics. Okay, so let's get started. Now we're gonna be using Michael's character. It's a great character because it's really simple and allows us to set up a very, very basic skeleton to look at how bones actually work. So the first thing that we need to do is add some bones. So to do that, we need to activate our bone tool with the B key. And you can see that now the cursor has this bone icon, which means we can go ahead and start creating our bones. Now, as we click, uh, we're not actually creating bones, we're adding joints, and in between the joints, we generate bones. So to add our uh, bones, we need to um, find where the joints are gonna be, and those are gonna be where our joints would be on the actual character. So in this case, we're gonna start at the shoulder, create a joint at the shoulder, and then create another joint at the elbow. And you can see that this has created a bone, and we have our two joints here, the one at the elbow and the one at the shoulder. And now we need to create another bone. So let's add another joint down here about where the wrist would be. And then once we get that, um, we can confirm our bone chain and we can either use T to activate the transform tool or escape and that will, um, that will confirm our bone chain. Now at this point, our bone chain doesn't actually do anything. We can rotate the bones and you can see that um, they're not really doing much to our character. So what we need to do uh, in this case, because we're going to be using these bones to bend this arm, we need to bind and weight the uh, um, bones to this arm path here. Now, to do that, we need to select our arm. And specifically, we need to select the uh, path that makes up the arm. So we can either select the arm shape and hit enter, and that selects our path layer, or we can just go to the hierarchy and select the path layer for that arm. Now, when we do that, you can see that there's this bind bones option that appears here in the inspector. So we can hit the plus button and that changes our UI. And you can see that now our stage is surrounded by this blue outline. And that's letting us know, hey, it's time to select the bones that you want to use. So in this case, we want to select both of these bones. So holding shift, I'm just going to select those bones, hit done. And now you can see that in the inspector, those bones have been added to this path. Now to check the influence and see how our vertices are influenced by each bone, we can go into edit vertices mode and click on each vertex and see um, which one of those bones is actually influencing it. So in this case, this first vertex up here is influenced by the blue bone. This one's influenced by the blue bone and so is this one. Now, the reason that they're all being influenced by the blue bone is it's because that was the first bone that we selected in the binding process. So we need to go back and update these weights um, to have each vertex respond to the bones like we want them to. So this vertex up at the top is already correct. Um, now this one right here is in between the blue and yellow bone. So what we want to do with that is give each bone an equal influence. So we're going to use 50%. So that means each bone has an equal share of influence over it. And then with this vertex here, we want this yellow bone to have all of the influence. So we'll go to the yellow bone, take it 100%. 
and now it's going to be influenced by just this yellow bone here. So when we're done with that, we can hit the done editing button up there at the top and we can test our bones out and you can see that the arm is working just how we want it to. But we need to do something with this hand because if you move your arm, obviously your hand moves along with your arm. So we want to facilitate that. Now there's two ways we can do this. The first way is by taking this hand and creating a hierarchical connection with this bone here. Now when we rotate this bone, because this hand is a child of that bone, um, it will inherit the transform properties of the bone. Um, but we can't use this bone to deform the hand in any way because we haven't bound and weighted, uh, weighted it. But at this point, it's a nice simple rig. We can you know, kind of use the bone to move the hand and then have the hand wave if we want it to. So it's, that is good for creating um, something simple. Now, if we want the fingers to articulate, we can do uh, sort of what we did up here. We can actually create some bones for the fingers. And this is, this is sort of a simple way to set up fingers. Um, so just like we did with the hand, we can create a hierarchical connection between each one of these fingers and their respective finger bones. So we can go through that really, really quickly. So we'll just drag and drop those on here like so. Like this. And now when we rotate those bones, those fingers are rotating as well. So that gives us a little bit more articulation. Uh, we'd want to create a hierarchical connection between these bones and the arm bone. So now when we move the arm bone, all of our fingers are moving along with it. So that's a way to do a simple rig for the fingers. Um, but let's say we want to actually have the fingers bend at the knuckles. Well, we'd want to add multiple bones because at this point we're saying, okay, we want to bend the path with bones. So that's where we'll want to bind and weight everything. Now I'm just going to do uh, this one finger here and that should give you an idea of how it works. Um, it's going to work the same way we did with the arm. So first thing we need to do is go to the path layer, bind the bones that we want, hit done and then go into edit vertices mode and ensure that we have the correct influence. And by the way, you can bind uh, or you can weight, uh, change the weights of the transform handles for your, um, for your different vertices. So in this case, we're gonna treat this like we did this elbow vertice and give that an equal influence between both bones. And then on this one over here, we wanna give the ones at the fingertip uh, hundred percent influenced by this yellow bone. So now when we go in and we rotate these bones, you can see that our finger is actually articulating like a normal finger would. So, uh, if you want, you can go through and do that for each finger, but you can see the difference in when we bind and weight something versus when we just create a hierarchical connection. Now, obviously we need to take these bones and stick them onto our arm bone. And then there you go. We've got a fully working, arm like this and obviously this finger works but if you wanted to get these other ones you'd have to set those up um, so with that you should be able to take this information that you learned about the arm and apply it to the rest of the character to actually build out a full skeleton so i hope you got something out of this video and if you enjoyed it um, go ahead and leave us a thumbs up and let us know that you liked it and if so we'll continue to do these in the future so thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the next one